It's that time of year again. In this video, I'll go over my plans for my BlizzCon 2018 cosplay. Hi, I'm Kazul, and welcome to my lair. Now, I've started planning out my big BlizzCon cosplay build, and now I want to reiterate that I am not participating in the costume contest this year. This is a personal choice for a couple of reasons. One, uh, because I won the grand prize with Hogger last year, I don't feel like I have anything left to prove there, and I want to let others have a chance to compete and win. Reason number two, the contest takes up a lot of my time, and I want to be able to enjoy the convention while I'm there, and also be available for more photo shoots around in cosplay. And three, there is another costume contest that I want to compete in. You heard me right. This year I want to compete at the TwitchCon costume contest. Now, TwitchCon is one week before BlizzCon, so my build timeline won't be affected that much. And I always love a new challenge. In the description, you'll find a link to my Twitch channel, and I am going to be starting to stream this week. So please follow along if you would like to watch live, and if not, that's okay. I'll post my progress here on YouTube as well as I go. One more thing I want to mention is that I am building the goat man to fit my husband, just like I did for Greymane. It's his turn to be a scary creature this year. So to get you caught up on my progress, I have been doing research and planning lately. And I'll, t I'll first start the video by telling you a little bit about the character, then I'll outline my goals, then I'll share my concept, art, and design ideas with you. As I've said before, I am building a Khazra Moon Clan Shaman from Diablo 3. The, the Khazra, which are also called Goatmen, are half-man, half-goat creatures that were once human, and they're found on many regions in Sanctuary. Um, they, like I said, they were once human, and they became corrupted and now serve their demon masters. They are warlike and have formed into many clans, and the Moon Clan is found in Act 1 of Diablo 3. And the Shaman is the ranged spellcaster that launches frozen orbs to slow the Nephilim down. So that's the character. And my goals with this costume is to make it very lightweight and comfortable. Um, I really felt bad when I built Greymane that the head was so heavy and it was very uncomfortable for my husband. And I, I want to be able to recover from that and give him something comfortable to wear. Um, I also want to have a really realistic finish. That was one of my goals with Hogger, and I just want to keep stepping up my skills in that department. So doing a lot of the cool hair work to make it look really weathered and realistic. Um, also, he'll have a muscle suit that needs to have a human skin-like texture on it. So being able to uh, do something about that, like building a spandex muscle suit and then being able to make sure it looks like skin, um, it'll be really neat. Um, so there you go. I want to make it very lightweight and comfortable to wear, and as well as having a really realistic finish. Also, when I build my costumes, I like to set goals for specific techniques I want to try out. So on this one, I want to play around a lot with corset boning as a means to shape the body so that it's very lightweight and breathable. I also have always wanted to try the look where you build the character's head up on top of your own. And so you can see like in my sculpts that I want the, the face of the character above the face of the performer and so you'd have a vision port through the neck. So the most challenging part that I anticipate for this costume is going to be the weight in the head. Now with these giant, giant horns, um, I do want to try to make them as large as possible and as lightweight as possible. So th I think that that part will be the most challenging. Because I know that the weight in the head will be a, a difficult thing to keep down, even with the techniques that I started learning and refining on Hogger, 
to keep his head, the weight down on his head as much as possible. This one, even with those techniques, it may not be light enough to be comfortable. Um, so I'm going to be trying to do some sort of internal structure on the neck that will help support the creature's head and have that weight be supported on the shoulders instead of on my husband's head. So come on in closer and I'll show you closer my concept sculpts to give you an idea of what I'm going to do. So first off, this here is an art doll that I made around 2014 of the Moon Clan Shaman. I thought even back then that the design was really neat and I just wanted to try building an art doll. So it was built with a poseable aluminum wire armature inside so that I could pose it in different positions. Um, and you can see I really enjoyed sculpting the giant curling horns, the face, and being able to paint all that face paint on it. Just give it a really fierce expression, like trying to give a goat a fierce expression was a little difficult. See, he has like dangly earrings and bones that dangle on his belt. He has this really cool staff that he carries. Um, lots of leather garments and teeth and clothes, teeth, teeth and uh, rope on his clothes. Um, it was a really fun build. So one of the first things when I went to redesign this character as a costume was I got out my quarter scale sculpt, remember it's available for purchase on my website, um, was to sculpt and make sure that this neck, this above the neck thing idea would work. So I, I bulked up around the neck, left the face kind of exposed. It'll be covered in the final version, uh, but I'll probably build in for comfort like a removable flap that you can just like easily open when you want to take a break so you can get a drink and cool off while that's happening. So, and you can see I had to build pretty substantially on the back of the head going into the shoulders, which we'll talk about more later. But as far as the facial expression goes, I took, had a few iterations before this that I wanted to go on. So I made his face removable so that I could try out some different things. My first instinct was to go with a more stoic look maybe more glaring stoic so that so that it would just be like a really intimidating character um, but after a conversation with my husband about what type how, how he would want to play this character and what sort of character he envisioned it to be and how he would want to act in it we decided that a uh, open mouth snarling goat man was more in line with his vision so I redid the sculpt and this time opened his mouth which that's more like my original art doll which I do like but I went in and with, with my new sculpting skills and more knowledge of form I, I went in and improved it you see I'm kind of going for a Nubian goat sort of face so it has like the really exaggerated Roman nose um, trying to understand uh, goats and how they wrinkle if they were to snarl was a challenge, but I think that they've got that I've got it there. There's not a whole lot of um, Definition that they have in the front of their muzzles, but I, th I Thought I got it down pretty good one thing that I wanted to try and add into it as well was to try to give a more kind of gaunt face old man look so you see all these wrinkles that I've carved under the eye and around the face and nose is to try to give it that sort of appearance. Now I've also added in a horn that I sculpted that I can put on and one thing that I'm still trying to figure out is exactly the the angle that I want to put this on because I want it to look good from all angles so viewing it from the front like it does look better if it's angled a little bit more horizontally so it comes out a little. Um, from the side though, if it's too horizontal it doesn't look as good, so trying to find a balance of that. Also I gotta take into consideration how he'll, my husband will want to move around in this. 
because those big horns, they're going to hit people. They're going to hit walls and doors. So trying to make them wide and intimidating looking without being too wide so that they're inconvenient. Um, also, I will be making these removable from the head um, just in case like anybody, it, they don't poke somebody's eye out if it bumps into them. There'll be enough give that they'll... Uh, break away and not poke people's eyes out. Um, also, having them removable for things like storage and transportation will be really good. After I sculpted the head, I took and grabbed out my little resin body guy that I concept out body shapes onto. Now, as, as I was experimenting, I, I know that I have to build a muscle suit for this creature. Um, not saying that my husband isn't strong, but he, the goat man needs a little bit more defined muscles. Plus, since I'm building the head up above his own head, I will need to sort of change the profile of his shoulders, building them up a little more, and also puffing out his chest a little to make it look like it's more balanced. Also, I'll have to build out quite substantially on the back and in the trapezius muscles to make it look like his neck could support such a massive set of horns. Now, going down into the lower half of the body with the digitigrade legs, um, I want to have at least the bottom of the legs seem very slim. Now, fur adds a lot of bulk, so having it even slimmer on the bottom of the leg, just the structure, is even more important. So, with, with this, this uh, part on the front of your thigh, this part, I actually want to experiment with corset boning to create this structure. There are things called uh, lobster tail hoop skirts that just take corset boning and make a lobster tail on the back. And so taking that idea, which I learned from a panel that I went to in Cosplay America, um, I want to try and see if I can simulate that in the legs. And if it comes out that that works, that will produce like a really lightweight, uh, a really lightweight and breathable padding for this thigh. And since it'll be hollow on the inside, there'll be plenty of room for airflow. And if I wanted to, even I could put some cooling packs down on his thighs. Your thighs do carry a lot of water or a lot of blood circulates through them. So putting uh, cooling packs there will help keep it cool. Um, going down to the bottom of the leg, I do want to try and cut out my husband's heel visually to give it this more exaggerated goat leg form. So this can be done since the, the goat man's fur and his hoof will be dark, like a dark fur and a dark hoof, uh, wrapped in leather. I can probably make the heel visually disappear if I cover it in a sort of medium gray or light gray or just neutrally colored, lighter color thing. Whether it's fur to, to continue the textures, or if I were to just like keep it as slim as possible and cover it in a little bit of fabric. I will have to experiment with that and see which one's better. But I think that that will make it so that it, it keeps the character balanced, um, and it looks like it's actually balancing on a hoof because I tried on this side to make the hoof bigger to be able to hide my husband's entire foot. And I just think that that's looking a little too chunky and I didn't like it. So that's why I tried it again on this side to do the slimmer foot. Also, you see, I added some clay on the bottom for a platform that I want to raise my husband up and make him even taller. And going back to the horns, you see how this horn comes out quite substantially far from his shoulder. I may end up having to shrink the horns down a little bit, and I think that even these, this horn that I have 
sculpted for this form is even smaller than the one that I had sculpted for just the head, which I, I will just have to do some experimenting and fine tuning to get the exact size of the horn down. I just don't want it to look small. I want it to look, and I don't want it to be too impractical. So finding that balance will be a bit of a challenge, maybe some trial and error. But I'm really looking forward to, to this build. I think there's a lot of exciting things to try. Oh, one thing that I want to do with the neck, like I want to build a structure that, uh, I, I have some ideas and plans for building a structure where it'll actually come off the top of his, my husband's shoulders to support most of the weight of the head, but it'll still be flexible enough to turn the head left and right. I haven't figured out how to give him the back and forth head motion, but I don't think that I can find a solution that will satisfy both and still be able to structurally hold the head up. So I may have to just choose one or the other. What I might do is add a pivot on the head itself above the support structure that will allow me to turn the head up off the head. So if my husband were to crouch and lean forward, we could, instead of having the goat man looking at the ground, tilt his head up to look at any camera. And, and that would just be a sort of thing to pose with. Um, all the rest of the time, he, when he would be performing, he'd be holding himself tall, uh, chest puffed out, so that he was very imposing and intimidating. So there you go. Those are some of the plans that I have. I'm excited for every part of this build and I can't wait to, to continue to show you more. So there you have it. That's my plan and my direction that I'm going in to build this goat man for this year. Remember, if you're following on social media, I'm using the hashtag Kazraplay. Eh? to tag all my posts with it. And remember to follow my Twitch if you want to follow along as I build. But if not, just please subscribe and I'll keep my progress updated here. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Kazool reminding you to embrace your inner beast. <laughs>